These are all the sweaters that I admit. Actually, not all the sweaters. Hi, my name is Laurel, also known as Bless Maven on Instagram and Ravelry. I absolutely love it when people show everything that they've knit throughout the year. So that's what we're going to do today. These are my knits for 2022. Hope you enjoy them. The first sweater that I finished in 2022 was the Akemi sweater by Keiko Kikuno. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, it was in the Amarisu magazine, uh, issue 21. And um, it caught my eye right away um, in the beautiful red color. Mm -hmm. But it has some really beautiful textured stitches and a cute little fringe. You can kind of see some of the textured stitches on the arms. And the yarn was this brand by Daruma. It's called Jinmo, I think. And this was just like their coat, their white color. I love it. I love how it turned out. It is very warm. So unless it is a very cold day outside, um, you don't wear a ton because it is warm. It is fits wonderfully and it's probably one of my favorite makes this year. I would love to hear what you've been working on, what you knitted last year and what on your needles right now. Comment below and let me know. This is my second knit that I completed in 2022, my second sweater. It is knit from House of Alla Mode and Spun Right Round and Ken Yarn from Mohair. It's a very fun sweater. I kind of feel like it would be very cute for like a little a party sweater. Um, this was in the Amarisu issue 17. My next sweater is um, the Love Note by Tin Can Knits. I fully copied the grocery girls when they were doing theirs. This yarn is Pearl Soho, their linen quill, and Stonewall Gray, held with Robbie and May's um, mohair in the color Dire Wolf. I really love the lace. I chose to not do decreases at all in the sleeves and just let them be long and open. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a bell sleeve effect. Okay, so for the very next sweater, I was so excited to knit this. Um, the second I saw like the teasing pictures um, from Pom Pom, it is the Effervescent Pullover by Amy Schur. And she knit hers in Wandering Flock. I knit mine in Wandering Flock. So I used their Cosmic Tie-Dye colorway in both the Solo Fingering and Mohair in the same color. And I love how it turned out. The little ruffle and the lace is just so cute. And it's just a super fun, cute sweater. All right, next up, another pattern from Caitlin Hunter. Um, this one I used Ritual Dye Yarn. They're un undine. Their unbeaten yarn and knitting for olive. It was left over from a previous project, um, the cotton merino. 
for the color work. This top is just so great. It's wonderful for like spring, summer. And I really like it. And the color for the unbeam is light, I believe. All right, up next is my Soldatna. I did not read them so well. Everyone has, I feel like, knit one of these. Um, I knit mine with long sleeves and I used all sprigs and stone muriac yarn, which is like the soft. Probably my favorite color combination um, that I have put together. I feel like it is the most kind of me. I did lengthen the body just a little bit. And then again, you get long sleeves. There's a quick decrease at the end, but I had like a nice little. And if you're enjoying this video, make sure that you like below. Everything helps. All right, next up, I have my Badger and Bloom. I actually think last year um, knit the Badger kids, kids version um, for my son. This is knit with Chelsea Lux 80s dance and Ritual Dyes Priestess in the colorway leather. I feel like they went together so well. And I did end up, not here, but all of the body in the sleeves, I did end up alternating things just to make sure that it had a nice overall look. My fastest sweater was the Badger and Bloom. It only took me 10 days. And I think I probably could have done it faster because I was actually simultaneously knitting something else. It was a fast, fast knit. All right, so next up is my Easy V. I still have strings um, because I think I'm going to have to do a little surgery on the arms. Um, I haven't decided, probably going to. Um, it does fit a lot like the picture that um, Caitlin Hunter, it's her pattern, like she has on the front of her pattern. It is definitely oversized. I do like it a lot. Um, I used Brooklyn Tweed Arbor, I believe in the color Kettle. And then I used Absolute Zero, Nostalgia, and Good Omen for the color work. Just love how it turned out. And also, I believe the color Nostalgia, oh yes, I ran out. So, right here. For like a couple of rows, I just ended up using some of my stash that I had kind of similar colors and just marled them. And I think it turned out okay. Like I'm, I don't think anyone would notice. Now, now you'll not notice because I pointed it out. But other than that, I think it turned out really nice. And again, I don't know. Maybe let me know if I should change the sleeves. It is cozy. I do like that they kind of come down. I just think it might the sweater a little bit eats me alive. You could also back up a little bit. Look. The thing that I really loved about this was the neckline. How it has to be. Whoops. It has to be shaping. I thought it was really a unique way of shaping a sweater. Um, I really liked it a lot. I think it's a very like fun, cozy pattern. And I do think next year I will be doing 
the halo butter. I don't, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, but with a similar neckline. I'm really curious if any of you have like little tells when you're um, trying to figure out whether or not you're trying, you're putting on your sweater from the front to the back. I haven't been putting like a tag, like this is the back, although I know that Shelly Cam has some very cute ones. Um, so I'm always looking at, this particular pattern has an extra repeat, so I have to always look to see which one, which side it ends up landing on. All right, so this is the Ann Vensel sweater. She released it this year, it's called the Rabinia sweater. And the yarn is Chelsea Lux Merino DK, held with Wandering Flock. The Chelsea Lux color is Stonewashed, and the Wandering Flock is Cosmic Tie-Dye because it is probably my favorite, favorite color. Kind of gives a little, it softens, but it also makes me some of the colors really pop, especially like right up here, you can kind of see, and then brightens them up a little bit. And then I used for the blue and green shade is a Treehouse Mist in Nautical and Mermaid Tail, and that's held with mohair from and yarn, and this is colorway baby boy which I also used in my earlier Alexa sweater. But this was a labor of love. I don't know why, but I somehow ran out of yarn. And I tracked some down, um, luckily. And you can kind of see it right here. Oh, it's a little bit lighter on the sleeves, but I feel like you wouldn't notice unless I printed it out to you. You notice? Let <laughs> me you know. Um, I love the shoulder detail and the sleeves. I think are my favorite part of this sweater. Um, and this is the first time that I knitted this type of construction where you knit the front, set it, set it aside, pick up stitches, make the back, and then join in the round after the sleeves. So it was my first time knitting a sweater with that construction. I don't know that it was my most favorite way to knit a sweater, but I do actually think that it is my most favorite um, style of sweater. So just gonna have to get used to it because I really, really do love how this turned out, and how cozy it is. It is like a nice hug on a winter's day. It is like the best. Can I say like one more time? Okay. So, one last time because it is amazing. Now I just have to clean up all of these sweaters. That's all the knits for today. I hope that you'll join me for part two where I go over all the cowls, shawls, hats, socks, and kids sweaters next time. See you then. And if you made it all the way to the end with me, make sure to subscribe so that you can be notified when part two comes out. Have a great day. Happy knitting.